it's 2 a.m. You can class at international times is. <laughs> When I feel calm I'll keep you close And if I could hold you I've been doing this meditation challenge. Oh, this is really wholesome. Okay, the task. Draw a beautiful, creative, fun picture of what abundance you desire in your life. It might include images of love, connection, success, money, bank balances, paychecks, family, nature, health, material things, a home, and any other means by which you already do or desire to receive abundance in your life. Be sure to include drawing money to pay off all the debts and expenses that you wrote down yesterday. That was yesterday's task. And the mantra for today is, today I focus on what I want to attract into my life. Today I focus on what I want to attract in my life. Cute. Okay, Satchit Ananda. Normally I do the task first and then I do the meditation, which is like 15 minutes after. And this just sets up my day. So I'm on day three, I'm going strong. It's like a 21 day challenge that I'm doing with my friend. I have to like write in the group chat, like day three done, which keeps me accountable. Moment of appreciation for pastel highlighters. <laughs> so I normally just write down the quote as well. So here I just kind of mindfully reflected on what I'm grateful for and what I still would like to attract into my life. I just did some rough sketches. Beautiful. I think it is good to like clarify your goals, or like things you want to attract into your life because how can you make them happen unless they're even in your mind to begin with. I don't know if you believe in the law of attraction but I do think there's something about like setting things in your subconscious which is important and the more you kind of repeat them to yourself especially in present tense like i am worthy of being successful and happy like i am a doctor i am abundant financially i think you're more likely to attract those qualities into your life okay i'm now gonna do the abundant meditation to meditate on this and then my day is gonna start <laughs> Okay, now as part of my routine, living at home, isolation, good times, uh, I will not go downstairs until I have gotten changed and gotten ready for the day. I tend to define my outfit the night before, so there is like literally no friction to getting ready. Otherwise, I am just lazy and just like don't ever want to get ready and I'll just like do the day half of my pajamas and it's just not as good for mindset. So yes, Jade, let's get ready. <laughs> I also feel a bit like a child wearing a pinafore, but um, apparently productive child energy is what we're going for today. So, good one, Jade. Ugh, opinion on tights. How do we feel about tights? Are tights comfortable? Are tights like what you want to wear in the day? I'm not a big tights fan. I feel like if I'm wearing tights and wearing like a skirt, I am making an extreme effort. Oh yeah, big news. Our house kind of got renovated. My room is... It's different, very different. It's a bit of a mess, I'm really exposing myself, it's fine. Okay, this makes me like even more of a child, I just have stuff everywhere, but it's chill. I'll get rid of that right now. <laughs> Interesting fact, I have never had a full length mirror. I've just, I've never had one. So now I'm like, oh, hello. I now know what I look like, so pros and cons. I wanna put that up maybe. Cute bed, absolutely overflowing bookshelf. Is she a study tuber? Does she like learning? Yes, she does. <laughs> oh, more evidence of being a YouTuber. <laughs> oh, and if you thought these beautiful flowers were real, you're very wrong. <laughs> I love nature, but I really am not very good at looking after plants. So yes, this for now is fake. <laughs> okay, I'm being a good citizen because there's no way I can leave my room in this state. Uh, this is just stuff I haven't fully unpacked, which is still really bad because I've been here for like a week. Jade, ta-da. Okay, hello, I'm sorry for the poor angle. I'm not really being a very good YouTuber today, it's fine. Okay, so I normally don't really wear that much makeup, but sometimes I'm like, oh, Jade, let's just, let's make a bit of an effort. I'll always either shower or wash my face, and then I'll put on some cream moisturizer. Most of my skin routine happens at night, but. This is basically the extent of the makeup that I will do. I suck at makeup, I just, I, I have so much respect for people who are good. Um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna very lightly put some like brown in my eyebrow arch. So then I'm like, oh, and it's like slightly more defined her face. And then I might use a tiny bit of concealer under my eyes because 
I stayed up pretty late. That's, that's kind of it. I feel like there's a lot of pressure with you watching me. I feel I think I just messed that up. Oh. At uni, I could do this whole routine in like a solid 20 minutes. Like shower, get ready, choose an outfit, get out the door, get all my stuff together. Yes. Oh, should I curl my eyelashes? Let's let's do it. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Gorgeous. Okay, I've never really understood how you're meant to use these things. I could probably look it up, but I just don't really think I ever have. Do I dab? Do I rub? Do I use water? Do I not? I don't know. Oh, makeup. <laughs> Is it just the lighting in here? Or does that look really patchy and awful? <laughs> wow. We tried. Well, the only people I could really impress today are my brother, so... And I guess my class through my laptop screen, but the fuzziness. I could be, I could have Gucci eye bags and no one would know. <laughs> is that better? Is that worse? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Regardless, it is time to start my day. I'm gonna put some cute earrings in. They're elephants made of jade, really cool. Hey, <laughs> okay, we're good. Let's go team. Okay, it is now that I allow myself to go on my phone and check on messages especially because a lot of my friends live in very different time zones right now some of them this is like the only time of the day that i can really speak to them it's like over my breakfast i have a very defined morning routine in terms of breakfast Ooh. <laughs> no, <we're in> <laughs> Finna jump for the shit all top when I speak all cap with the speech to the cut up in the rapture. I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break, been a long day. Hit your line with your fog, do it with the light sticks. Maybe help me spark the ideas. We got nowhere else to go. It's only up from there. I've been on my go. Honestly, when I'm home, I feel like I'm on like a, a health retreat. My family just have healthy stuff everywhere. Ooh, let's put it on me. Wow. Oh, you missed this little bun. Oh. Okay, so pretty consistently while I'm eating my breakfast, I will get on my laptop and I will check out what needs to be done today. Um, and I'll put it in my to-do list if I haven't already. Sort of set my priorities for the day. I might start watching, if there's like videos for pre-work, I'll just casually watch the videos while I'm eating my breakfast. Chat to friends if my friends are around. So this is pretty much the extent of my morning. Making my to-do list, getting started on the natural sciences readings because it was such a dense article and paper. As I said, I also just chatted to friends casually, checked on social media a little bit. I don't want to like dive into the hole. This is so exciting. This has just arrived. Anything from the outside world during quarantine is just very exciting. I keep this all super is. Okay, so this is from The 100 Club. And they're gifting me something. I don't know what it is yet, but um, they're a really cool small business like fashion brand that kind of fights fast fashion because every item that they have, they only make 100 copies of it. So when you have one, it's like, you know you've got this cool limited edition item. Look, okay, so it's like a jade green and apparently they're naming it after me. This is called the jade sweater on their website. Wow, like a dark green with like the world on it. Okay, I have made my to-do list. I'm gonna go make a tea and I'm gonna sit somewhere else and get in the zone. The realities of online class. I just wanna look into her eyes while I'm gripping on a thighs so she knowing that it's real. They don't really want it with the kid. I do this to feed my future kids. And I got these lame niggas crossed cause I'm starving. No, I agree. I think the empowerment angle is like nicer. Like also because of the nature of social media it was Hello. So I just had like an hour meeting with my team for our civic partner project. This is like an internship thing that we do in the city alongside our studies. The university has loads of partner organizations, which is very cool. And we had to like put on our preferences and stuff. I got put with this organization, which is a nonprofit dealing with sexual harassment in the workplace. I literally adore them. I also think because obviously I do social media stuff, um, it's really interesting to apply social media concepts to marketing for like another organization. So yeah, I'm in like a marketing team for this national road trip they were meant to have, which is like empowering victims of sexual harassment to just know where to get resources. But 
then COVID happened and the road trip has been cancelled and all our meetings and everything is remote but we still have a final project for university which is based off of the internship and we still need to have a good deliverable for our civic partner because I don't want to let her down. So yes, we had a meeting, we we're just trying to redefine everything, brainstorm with COVID what we can still do. We're coming up to finals season which means I have so much to do, <laughs> so many assignments and stuff coming up. It's okay, we'll be fine um, but there is kind of just like a lot in my head. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my NS assignment. It's a group assignment, which again, with COVID, really not ideal. <laughs> the two people in my team, one is in Mexico right now, the other's in the US. So time zones is like, the evening works better for them. But I'm gonna start and just do some work now to like make our meeting more productive. So my classes start at five now, and I always go for like a run or do exercise before class. I tend to go around like 3.30ish. So right now it's one. And I need to like smash out the work before then. So plan for the day. Let's go. Wow, I'm very good at jazzing up leftovers. Oh my. This is just leftover pasta from like two days ago. I just sprinkled some nutritional yeast on it, which is like the vegan cheese B12 amazingness. I got some like couscous that I made ages ago. Oh, okay. Some hummus, I'm got some rocket, got some sauerkraut. Hello. Okay, so it's 3.45. My camera died, so I don't really have much evidence of anything I've done, but I have actually done some stuff. Now I'm hastily gonna go get ready and go for a run and do some exercise. Then I'll hastily come back, shower, put on these clothes again, Jump, ah, finish my pre-work, jump into class. That's the plan. Yeah. I get to leave the house. I get to leave the house for my daily exercise. If I didn't exercise every day, I think I would go insane. I have an actually decent exercise schedule. I tend to go out for a run one day. That like gets me out of the house. I just literally, I don't see anyone. I just go to a field. And the next day I'll do some kind of at home workout, like vlogilates or yoga or something. I tend to do it like, as they say, just before class. And it kind of wakes me up. So I get into classes and I can power it out till 9 p.m. and be okay. <laughs> also, I just spend most of the day eating. I'm not gonna lie because I have been trained at university that like free food, if you see it, you take it because food in San Francisco is expensive. And in my house, it's just like, it's just food everywhere. So I'm like, yes, please, I'll have some of that. Yes, please. Two lunches, sure. <laughs> Living my best life. <laughs> oh, also quick random recommendation. On my run the other day, I just listened to the whole of Lauren Hill's album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. If you just never listened to that album, I highly, Highly recommend it. Just go have a listen. Also Lizzo, very empowering music, but y'all know that. I think it's really just hit me right now that I'm not in San Francisco anymore and I'm in the UK and it's freezing. Why Jade did we come out in a t-shirt? A t-shirt? It's like, it's like five degrees. Let's run. My hands are like red and numb. I was also not very wise today because I have like Half an hour until class starts. I have not fully prepared my debate points. We'll make it back. <laughs> we'll make it back. <laughs> I just fell over. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Fun facts about Jade. I'm very clumsy. And apparently I tripped over a tree root, so. Uh, <laughs> At least you can't catch COVID from the ground. I have to run or I'm gonna miss my class. Good one. Good one. I know I sound like an absolute hippie, but this is my favorite tree in this nature reserve. I can't tell you why, it just is. I don't know. You're just a very cool tree. I've been coming here on my own since I was like 13, and this path used to be secret. And I remember I like. <laughs> I was like, Jade, we're gonna explore today when I was like 14 or something. And I came up here and I just found it. And little 14 year old me fit really perfectly in the little groove of the tree. And ever since, every time I come through here, I just like pause, even for a second, and just like, I don't know, honor my tree. Like I just, I just like it. I can't believe I fell. Jade, Jade. Maybe that's just a lesson in not rushing. I rush and I get stressed a lot. 
I will make it back for class. We're chill. We're chill. Am I a hippie? Yes. Do I care? No. <laughs> Didn't get me this time. 10 minutes to class. Can she shower, get ready, finish the pre-work and get into class? You know she can. Okay, so first I had this debate in Arts and Humanities. It was all about video games and whether or not they should have narratives. Super interesting. It got super heated and a spicy debate, which we love. And then I had Natural Sciences. The whole discussion was comparing the conclusions that media articles often make from scientific papers and kind of how they can be problematic. We were each set a specific paper about gut microbiomes and how they can affect neuroactivity. That was a dense study. Dense. <laughs> Got 20 more minutes left of class and then I'm done for the night. <laughs> Why hello. <laughs> okay, so my evening routine is very standard. Unfortunately, because a lot of things still operate in San Francisco time, I tend to have a lot of meetings, and calls and things straight after class. I had a call with a professor. I've just started Tiger King with Volk. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it yet. There's a lot of hype around it. It's, um, it's like a documentary series on Netflix about a guy who has 187 tigers in captivity in America. Many animal rights issues raised in that sentence. It reminds me a lot of everything I used to watch as a child. I used to be obsessed with Nat Geo and just watch like RSPCA programs and like random white Americans with massive exotic animals and animal rights issues associated with it. Like I was in love with programs like that, wildlife programs. But yeah, it's interesting so far. Also, I call friends and people I care about from university who are all around the world in different time zones. So I just called someone and I brushed my teeth and got ready and I'm pretty much ready for bed. Oh, okay, before I go to bed, because I'm just a nerd and I love everything I learn at university, I was talking about this on my Instagram story and why not? YouTube, YouTube should have it too. Okay, so in social sciences, we're doing metacognition. I've never studied anything related to psychology before. Yeah, this is just like a really cool module. I love it. Okay. You've I don't know if you've ever heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect. But I'm just gonna get up a simple graph for you and let's just talk about it because it's interesting. Here we have your level of knowledge about something, your competence. Here we have your confidence. The idea is that when you're a beginner, as you start to accumulate knowledge, you overinflate your sense of confidence in your knowledge so much. For example, like you're learning a language, you're learning all these new words, you're feeling like, wow, you know what? I've learned a lot. I'm actually quite confident in this subject now. Yet over time, as you get more and more knowledge in this sector, you suddenly start to realize all the things you don't know. Therefore, your confidence in your expertise actually decreases because you're aware of like how much there is in this space to know. But eventually, as you become a proper expert in the field, you have a really good knowledge of what you do and you don't know, you're able to more realistically assess your confidence in your knowledge. But yeah, this is fascinating for anyone like picking up a new subject or also if you're questioning your confidence about your knowledge of a subject, you might know a lot more than you realize, but just because you're aware of like how many things you don't know, you, you, de you devalue your confidence. Interesting fact as well is that we tend to trust people who are really confident in their knowledge. This effect proves that they're often not the best people that we should be trusting. Cause you could have this super inflated sense of confidence and actually like not much knowledge. It just means you should potentially question people who are louder in sharing their opinion and knowledge. It's not always the best. Lastly, there's the illusion of explanatory depth. This is basically the idea that we think we have sound knowledge on something, but then when we're asked to explain it, we suddenly realize this huge gap in our understanding that we weren't even aware of. For example, common example, um, if I ask you, do you know how a toilet works? Most people would say yes. But if I ask you to explain it, like the mechanism, most people have no idea. Most people are like, oh, you just push the handle and like the water comes down, it like goes away and that's that. And this concept can be applied to studying a lot. For example, you've read like 10 pages of a textbook about something. You feel like you get it. You feel like you know all about it, but then, your roommate asks you to explain it to them and you quickly realize that you clearly didn't understand it as well as you thought you did because you have this illusion of depth and you can't fully explain it. So yeah, that just proves you should use active recall methods and you like check what you, uh, your explanation with your notes, that kind of thing. I don't know, I'm a sucker for this stuff. I find it really interesting. Follow me on Instagram to hear my daily musings about my lessons because I just love learning. And with that, cute motivational message um i guess i collapse and go to sleep <laughs>
super excitingly. Um, I am waking up at 5am tomorrow because a Minerva student at our university has just casually networked in Taipei with the founder of YouTube. I don't know how I did this. This is incredible. Literally the guy who like, like in Silicon Valley coded YouTube. So I've got a Q&A meeting with him. I just want to say thank you to him for just like creating this platform that is now my job and my passion and allows me to share content with you. And life can just be so full of abundance. It's just very cool. Keep learning, keep growing, keep prioritizing your mental health because it is the foundation of everything and have a beautiful rest of the week. Thanks for coming. Bye.